Welcome to Inkpot. Starting a new unit, that's unit 4, which talks about jointly distributed random variables. So till now we have talked about random variables which was separate. So we had defined one experiment and uh, each of the events was mapped to a random to the value of a random variable, either x or y, etc. But sometimes we are interested in the joint behavior of two or more random variables. For example, suppose we define two random variables in an experiment of rolling a die three times. Let x be the number of times an even number is obtained and let y be the number of times a multiple of three is obtained. We might be interested in the probability of these two random variables, the values that these two random variables take together. So to make this clear, let's write the let's write the information in a tabular form. So random variable x, it's a discrete random variable. It can take the values 0, 1, 2 or 3 and similarly for y. So if in each of the rolls of the die we get an even number then the value of y is 3 sorry the value of x is 3 if we get only uh, two times in the roll out of the three rolls on two rolls we get an even number then x is equal to 2 and so on so now we want to find the probability distribution of these combined value so we want to know what is the probability that we neither get an even number nor do we get a multiple of 3 in any of the rolls. So that will be the probability. I have not filled out the table yet but that would be the probability in this cell. F further, what would be the probability that we get an even number on all 3 rolls and also a multiple of 3 in all the 3 rolls. So that is going to be given by this number and so on and so forth. Such a probability, dist probability distribution over two or more random variables is called a joint probability distribution. If you are considering only two random variables, then a joint dis probability distribution is defined for all the combinations of this x and y. The joint probability distributions can be defined for discrete or continuous joint variables. We will be discussing about the PDF of such jointly distributed variables. We will also discuss their mean and variance and some additional properties such as covariance, correlation and independence in the future videos. First, let's begin with an example of two discrete random variables and their probability distribution. Define x as the number of cars waiting at a traffic signal and y as the number of buses waiting at a traffic signal on any given day. This table lists out the frequencies of these values of different values that these random variables take. So this is called a joint frequency table. Basically what it is telling us that, so if you first let's see the total observations we have is 100 whether you add up this or this it's going to add up to 100 so let's say we have these 100 observations maybe on 100 consecutive days this experiment was conducted where at a particular traffic signal at a particular traffic signal it was counted how many number of cars were waiting and how many number of buses were waiting at any particular day on that traffic signal so out of the 100 days, it was found that on 8 days, on 8 instances, no car and, sorry, no bus and no car was waiting at the traffic signal. The column is telling you the number of buses. It lists the value of the buses and the rows are telling you the number of cars waiting. Similarly, on one of the days, it was found that four buses and 
one car was waiting at the signal similarly on 10 days two buses and two cars were waiting and so on and so forth so this joint frequency table tells us the frequencies with which this combination of the random variables occurs from this joint frequency table we can derive the joint probability table which is nothing but the frequency divided by the total number of observations so as you can see each of these numbers has been obtained by dividing the corresponding cell in the joint frequency table by 100 so 8 by 100 gives us 0.08 here 6 by 100 gives us 0.06 and so on so the joint probability table tells us the probabilities of the random variables taking these particular values so just like the it's basically just translating the frequencies the raw frequencies into probabilities or the chance that the event or these random variables will take these particular values observe that the sum of all the probabilities is 1 so maybe you can take a minute to just pause the video and verify that all of the probabilities are summing up to 1 we can write this using our notation that if fxy is the probability mass function or the joint pmf so because it is defined over two variables it will be called the joint pmf summing up over all of the values of the pmf for over discrete or over both the random variables y and x gives us 1 so basically what we are saying we are summing up this number with this number and so on then we are summing up this number and so on and this double summation summing up over all the values of y and the and all values of x is giving us the total probability that is equal to 1 we can also define something called as the marginal frequencies or marginal probabilities this is a special distribution you can say or special probability defined for jointly distributed random variables observe the numbers that are written in the margins of the two tables so let's start with the joint frequency table in the last row these numbers are nothing but the sum of the respective columns right so 19 has been obtained by adding up 8 plus 6 plus 5 plus 2 plus 0 and 0 30 has been obtained by summing up 7 15 4 3 1 and so on so this is telling us the probability or the frequency of observing zero cars waiting so that is 19 the frequency of one car waiting that's 30 and so on and so forth so this is called the marginal frequency of x so we are this is telling us the frequency of car waiting car is equal to 0 or waiting car is equal to 1 and so on so this is telling us this row is telling us the marginal frequency of the row variable or of the car random variable in this case similarly the last row in this joint probability table is also giving us the marginal probabilities for x so this has obviously been just derived from above so 0.19 is obtained by 0 uh, point summing up 0.08 plus 0.06 plus 0.05 plus 0 plus 0 and so on and so forth similarly we have the marginal frequency or the marginal probability of y in the columns so here we are adding up these numbers so point 30 has been obtained by adding up the horizontal numbers point 
by adding up the numbers in the next row and so on so these numbers are now telling us what is the probability that zero buses are waiting at a traffic signal on any particular day so that's 0.19 what is the probability that four buses are waiting at the traffic signal that's 0.12 and similarly the other numbers can also be interpreted marginal distributions or the marginal probabilities are quite uh, important to understand because there will be applications of this concept in the later topics we can define the joint probability distribution function for continuous random variables too so let's consider two continuous random variables we will denote the joint pdf by fxy just like we usually denote the pdf of x by fx pdf of y by fy and so on so now that we have a joint pdf we, it's going to be just a function defined over the two variables since it's a probability all the values that this function takes are going to be non negative over the required range over the desired range of x and y and just like we had that in the joint pmf the double summation or summing up over all the possible values of the pmf were giving us one here also in the continuous random variables case summing up over the probability distribution for all possible values of x and y in the put for which the pdf is defined and integrating it actually for these values of x and y is going to give us one so just like in uh, the discrete random variable or sorry in the continuous random variable case where we were where we were considering a single random variable the integral over the possible values of x written like this was 1 now we are saying the the values of all the values of the pdf over all the x and y is going to sum up to 1 we can also define the marginal pdf for continuous random variables so that is simply going to be fx fxx means the marginal probability or the marginal pdf of the random variable x to obtain this we are summing up the probability distribution over the values of y for each x so let's go back to the discrete example discrete variable case here we had marginal probability or the marginal pmf of x given by summing up pxy over the values of y so this one shouldn't get confused here when we want the pd uh, the marginal pdf of cars equal to 0 that is the x variable equal to 0 what we are doing is we are summing up over these values right so we are summing up over the values of we are summing up over the values of y so we are fixing one x summing up the values of y and getting this number then we are taking another x summing up these values and getting another number another marginal probability of x for now this particular value and so on so for for whichever variable we want the marginal probability we are going to sum the values of the other variable right we are going to sum up over the values of the other variable similarly when we want the marginals of x we are sorry when we want the marginals of y we are summing up over the x values here and these row values here and so on and so forth so similarly in the continuous case then we will be taking the integral over the integral will be taken over y if we want the marginal of x and the integral will be taken over x if we want the marginal of y and this will be done for each possible value of x and y so we will have let's say the continuous uh, variable is taking values between Minus three to three. The x variable in it. Then we will have the marginal of minus three. Then 
marginal of my of minus one and so on and so forth so for each value of x for which we want the marginal we are going to sum up over the values of y